Zcam has been teasing the turbo mount for a while now and we finally have a unit in to test. But what is the turbo mount and why would you want to use one? Let's take a look. The turbo mount is a 0.71 times focal reducer that uses the interchangeable mount system that the E2, M4, S6, F6 and F8 feature instead of adapting onto MFT or E like other options on the market do like the Metabones or Kipon adapters. You can remove the mount by removing the four corner screws using a 2mm hex driver. You can then easily swap to the turbo mount or to any of the other lens mounts offered by Zcam. The mount itself feels very well put together and solid and the mounting system has been made very easy so end users can do it on set quickly and safely. Having a native mount with a focal reducer built into it has a few benefits over getting a third party adapter from companies such as Metabones, Filtrox or Kipon. The first being compatibility. Once the turbo mount is on, it acts the same as any other mount on the Zcam. You have iris control, which isn't the case with some of the other focal reducers. Another benefit is the locking EF mount it uses. This is one thing I really liked with their regular EF mount as well. When mounting your lens, you line up the dots and then turn the locking ring. This means that there is much less movement in the mount when compared to a more traditional style EF mount. Metabones make their Cine series of adapters, which uses locking EF mount as well. You have much more play and an extra point of failure that you wouldn't have with the turbo mount with non-locking Metabones adapters. It also improves how sturdy the camera feels when rigged up. The turbo mount is much more reassuring to hold and use when compared to an adapter. The turbo mount has a focal reduction ratio of 0.71 times. This does the same as other 0.71 focal reducers on the market. Not only are you achieving wider field of views, but you are also gaining a stop of light, which is pretty handy. As you can use this mount with a range of the Z cams, they all have different sensor sizes, so you will get different crop factors when you're using them on different cameras. Personally, I think this is going to be very popular with the M4 and the S6, as with the M4, you can take its roughly 1.88 times crop factor and bring it down to 1.33, and with the S6, you go from roughly 1.53 to 1.09, which is really close to full frame. However, I think this also could be quite handy for the F8 too. The F8 is a very special use recommendation for me, but for those with resolution the key thing in their mind, you have to deal with a slight crop factor of that sensor. However, using it with the turbo mount will get rid of this. However, you also may experience some vignetting on your lenses as this will bring the crop factors down to around 0.91. One of the most common questions that people ask me when we are recommending focal reducers is how much the optics in these adapters change the performance of your lens and as a result, your image. So we wanted to do some controlled tests to show the differences between the native EF mount from Zcam, a Metabone Speed Booster 0.71 and the turbo mount. Let's start looking at some resolution charts and talk about a couple of points. For this, we shot with the M4 and shot in DCI 4K 25p in ProRes 422 and kept our lens consistent using our Zeiss Otis 55mm on each setup. For our chart test, we stopped the lens down to f11. When it comes to overall resolution, mounting your lens natively is the best, but that's not surprising. When comparing the turbo mount and speed booster, the turbo mount seems to suffer from internal reflections a little more than the speed booster. This is most likely due to the design of the mounts and the materials used inside the mount. When I noticed this, I thought it was because I wasn't using a hood on the lens, but the speed booster doesn't have this effect when the camera is in the same position using the same lens. In this clip, you can see me using my hand to cup the top of the lens, trying to stop the light, and you can see the overall contrast increase and the internal reflection stop. With this light leak reduced, the overall contrast, resolution, and chromatic aberration is better with the turbo mount than with the speed booster. Corner resolution isn't quite as good with the turbo mount than with the native mount, and the turbo mount does add some CA towards the corners of the frame, but this isn't surprising, and for the benefits you are getting, the small hit to optical performance is worth it. When looking at these charts, you can see that both the turbo mount and the speed booster don't change the levels of distortion that you get from using just the regular pass-through adapter, which is good. We also wanted to show you the field of view difference that you would get between using the turbo mount and not. And as you can see, you get much more field of view when using the turbo mount, which is what you expect from its 0.71 focal reduction. The Metabones and turbo mount are pretty close, but there is a slight difference. As well as a field of view difference test, we also wanted to see how the mounts handled our DD7 being blasted directly at it and then panning and tilting the light through the frame. We used the native EF mount as well as the speed booster and turbo mount. The speed booster has less flaring overall and especially handles the light better as the light leaves the edges of frame. The speed booster even handles this better than the native EF mount from Zcam. Depending on your taste, this may be fine and it could produce some interesting flares on camera. We didn't just want to shoot some more controlled tests, but also something a little bit more creative too. 
For this, Joe took the M4 and the turbo mount out in the woods to shoot some mountain biking. All the footage was shot on the Sigma 18-35 F1.8 and the Canon 50mm F1.2L. The footage has come out really nicely, though you can see some vignetting, but this will be down to the Sigma not covering rather than it being the turbo mount. The slight internal reflection may not be great for chart work, but on camera it's actually quite nice. However, the 18 35 was pushed past its rated image circle, so the corners do get a little soft and funky and vignettes like we said before. Overall though, the images are nice and being able to achieve wider field of views with smaller sensors opens up image qualities that are above their price points. Whenever I talk to people about the M4 or S6, focal reducers are often a topic that comes up, so the addition of the turbo mount makes a lot of sense. For people wanting to use EF glass on their Z cam, this is a great option. It integrates well with the camera, performs well optically, and is really good considering it's only priced at £299, which is quite a bit more affordable than other options on the market. With the M4, you are getting an incredibly fully featured camera, and the turbo mount gets you closer to that full frame look by getting you wider field of views at longer focal lengths. And the S6 takes that a step further by taking its Super 35 crop factor to pretty much that of full frame. Let us know what you think of the turbo mount in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.